In this video I'll be showing how to make a rapid fire airsoft minigun. To start this project the first step will be to take a 2 inch PVC end cap and drill a hole through the center of it to accept this rubber tire valve. Most tire valves will require a 1 half inch hole. With the hole now drilled this valve stem should fit snugly inside. This cap should now be glued to the end of a 2 foot long section of 2 inch pressure rated PVC. Be sure to use plenty of PVC primer and glue on the joints. Likewise, glue another end cap onto another 2 foot long length of 2 inch PVC. This time make it a solid end cap with no valve. Now on the other end of both of these lengths of PVC, I'm going to glue an elbow. Right here I have a regular 2 inch 90 degree elbow, but on this side I have a 2 inch 90 degree street elbow. The difference between this elbow and the other is that this one has an end that shrinks down so that it will fit inside right here. The last step in building the chamber of this cannon is to connect these two elbows. You can now see how our barrel and BB reservoir are going to sit on our newly formed chamber. First I am going to go over the design of this section here. This is the section that is going to hold our ammunition. What I have here is a 5 inch length of 1 and a quarter inch PVC. On this forward end I have nothing but an end cap and on this end here I have a coupling going to a reducer which has a threaded plug inside. This threaded plug is what is going to open when the cannon is assembled to reload. The first thing I am going to do to assemble this back section is to glue the pipe to the coupling and then the coupling to the reducer. Now with the back side of this chamber assembled we are not quite yet ready to glue the end cap on the front. First we need to drill a hole directly in the back of this end cap. The hole should be exactly the size of the outer diameter of the barrel we are going to use later. This aluminum tube which can be bought at most hardware stores has an internal diameter of about 6 millimeters, which is just the right size for airsoft pellets. The outside diameter is 21 64ths of an inch and that's the size hole I am going to drill through this cap. This barrel is going to be passing through three similar end caps so at the same time I'm going to drill a hole through each of them as well. You can now see that I've put holes right through the center of all three of these end caps which make them able to slip over this aluminum tube. One of these end caps can now be glued on to our rear chamber. In our next step we are going to take one of the other end caps that we've drilled a hole into and glue it to the top of this end cap which we have just placed on. These two pieces of PVC were not intended to be glued together in this way but because they are not holding any pressure this should not be a problem. As the glue is setting, be sure you have lined up the holes exactly. Now that we're done with our ammunition reservoir and our chamber, it's time to connect the two. We will be using this blower valve as our trigger. There are many models of these available, some of them as cheap as $10. To connect our valve to this rear chamber, what we are going to do is have to drill a hole through it and screw in this threaded piece. You want to drill the hole just smaller than the threads so that they have room to dig in. Notice that I drilled my hole through the fitting and into the pipe. This is going to provide the most strength because I am going through two walls of PVC. Now in the end of this valve I'm going to screw in this hose connector. Now once tightened down the fitting should have one foot of air compressor hose pressed onto it and a small hose clamp like this used to secure it. 
Now what we need to do is connect the air hose to the chamber. To do that, I'm going to take another one of these hose fittings and screw it in the side about right here. I'm going to have to tap another hole. Now with this hose fitting threaded in, we can go ahead and connect the other end of this hose. One of the final steps will be to add the barrel. We will be starting with a 10 inch piece of inch and a quarter PVC and inserting that into this rear fitting here. Next to the front of this we will be adding another coupling. This coupling is going to allow the barrel to rest between the two chambers. The next thing I will be doing is adding onto this coupling another 25 inch piece of PVC. This piece I have drilled holes into for effect. To the end of this, I will also be adding on our last end cap that we drilled the hole into. Both this 10 inch section and this 25 inch section have been measured exactly to come out just an inch less than 3 feet. That is because this 6 millimeter aluminum tubing is sold in exactly 3 foot sections and you want a little bit of room on each side to extend through the holes in the couplings. Now what we need to do before putting this PVC together with this coupling is to insert our aluminum barrel. Now to make sure this barrel stays in place, you need to put a little bit of PVC cement around the outside. You need to be very careful not to get any in the end, however, or else the pellets will not fit down it. With our aluminum barrel inserted, we can now put on our final piece of PVC. With the addition of this final piece of PVC, you should have a little bit of the barrel sticking out of the center. Right around the outside of this end should now be covered with a little bit more glue. Now to get the end of the barrel through the hole in the final coupling, it will help if you stick the end of a screwdriver through the hole and then into the barrel to lift it into position. So here is our turret with nearly everything completed. All that must be done now is to wait 24 hours for the cement to cure, and then we will add some chamber supports and give it a paint job as a final touch. Here you can see I have finished painting the cannon. Now all that needs to be done is to put in the spacers to separate the chamber. For the chamber spacer, what I have here is a length of 1 inch interior diameter pipe insulation. When folded in on itself like this, it turns out it is just the right width for these two chambers. With the spacer now in place, the barrel should go back on and several metal straps should be used to secure it. With the straps in place, the overhang can be trimmed off and then this project will be completely done. To fire this machine gun, simply put about two handfuls of pellets in the back, replace the plug, pressurize to around 60 psi, and pull the trigger.